Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Buck Brief. Aaron Wexler is back by popular demand of the interwebs and the people who spend their time on it. She is non-lib take on Instagram. Go follow her. Check out her stuff. She's a commentator. She is a smart lady. And she thinks what is going to happen now that they've tried their best shot against removing Biden and it hasn't worked. So what happens now? Oh, gosh, Buck, you know this because I said this to you in a conversation offline, <laughs> but I, I disagree with you. I actually just don't know how the left actually lets Biden stay in the race. Now, however, they how, how they choose to get rid of him. I think there are a few options here. Uh, I wouldn't put it past them. You know, we've had chefs drown off Martha's Vineyard. I really are going to do. I know I know you don't agree, agree with me and I'll, I'm sure you'll you'll make sure your audience knows that. But um, I don't think that Democrats are willing to have an honest campaign. I don't think they believe in election integrity. And so why would this be any different? Why would they let him stay in and when we're going to smoke him if he's the candidate? If so he's the what nominee? happens then? What what is the process by which you, do you think? I mean, I know nobody knows. I'm asking you to predict the future. But the likeliest thing is the following for Biden and the following person takes over. Yeah, I mean, I think they will choose. I think there's a good chance. I'm not saying they will do this, but I would be in no way surprised if the left comes in and says, we found a candidate, we like them, we're placing them here. And it doesn't even matter if it's illegal. I've seen great posts from everyone from Charlie Kirk to you, many people online talking about, you know, different state ballots, fundraising, all of that. I don't know. I just never see the left as playing by the rules. They think they're above the law. And so I just wouldn't be surprised if they actually try to go around all these laws that are in place. Now, my ideal situation is for Biden to stay in, um, and maybe he does. You could be right, and we can we can make a little bet on that for a coffee. But I just don't see how they will actually keep him in. See, I, I that's so funny. I take it from the other side of it, which is I don't see how they get him out. Like that's the part of it to me that is the. There, there's no way around this. Like, if he just keeps saying no and he's alive, there's nothing they can do. The, I mean, the 25th Amendment, that is a guarantee that Donald Trump wins the election. If the Democrat Party goes through the weeks before the convention, the, the like, uh, you know, internal melee of we're using a constitutional mm -hmm. provision to forcefully remove our president and candidate from office, um, that that is a non-starter, right? So I don't... And I don't know how they convince him that there's a better a better thing for him at this phase. You know, I'm sure you've seen this before. I mean, Larry K is Larry King? No, he passed away, right? I'm, I'm forgetting now. Is he still around? I think he passed away. Is he alive? I don't know. I'm not we'll sure. We'll clean this up in post. Anyway, but Larry King was a guy who, when it was clear that he was past his prime, uh, in, even in the broadcast mm -hmm. business, he wasn't president of the United States, he was very well known to just be like, I, I got to get back in. I got to get back in the game. And, you know, he was like married mm -hmm. eight times or seven times or something. So, you know, he's a guy who didn't necessarily learn his lesson in a whole range of ways. But uh, he didn't know who he was if he wasn't doing content. You know what I'm saying? He, it, it, the yeah. job becomes the person. I think for Joe Biden, Joe Biden's been in office for 50 years. I don't think Joe Biden mm -hmm. knows who he is if he wakes up and he doesn't. he's an elected official. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little more... Uh, pessimistic in this regard. I don't think it's that he's so used to being a politician. I think he's used to power. He's used to protecting Hunter, right? Those are the things he doesn't want to give up, right? And same same thing with Jill. Uh, listen, me, this might be the first time in my life that I see the left has made their bed and then they have to sleep in it. Maybe this is that moment. Uh, I'm just, I think I'm so jaded from losing so many elections, not all, but it's been a lot of heartache in my life as a conservative woman that I just... I just I don't think the race is over. I don't think we can assume that he's going to stay in. I think we have to stay vigilant and just stay on top of making sure this is an honest election and that everyone gets out to vote. And I just never we we just absolutely cannot become complacent as a conservative movement right now. You're going to have to tell me about this one, by the way, because I saw this in your in your Instagram feed. So uh, hat tip you on the show for bringing this to my attention that New York City ordered a four million dollar mckinsey study on whether trash cans work can, can we get to that in just a yes. second i want i want you to explain to me that but first up look it's from our sponsor here the international fellowship of christians and jews it's hard for us in america to imagine what everyday life is like living in israel because everything changed on october 7th of last year when their citizens were attacked by hamas terrorists since then it has been a near constant barrage of missiles from one hostile force or another 
It's difficult to lead a normal life with that disruption, and that's when friends are so important. I partner with the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews, or the IFCJ, for just that reason. This is an organization dedicated to showing Israeli citizens they are not alone. We want them to know that they're not alone and that people around the world are their brothers and sisters and care for their safety. Christians like you support Israel through the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews, and that support helps those citizens of Israel remain steadfast and strong. Visit online, supportifcj.org. Again, that is supportifcj.org. Um, okay, back to, uh, and that's like something really important. Now we're switching to something not important, which is uh, <laughs> McKinsey. McKinsey, yeah, it's a hard, hard turn here. McKinsey trash cans uh, study for $4 million. I mean, I, by the way, I've always thought management consulting and my management consultant friends, of which I have had many over the years, are like, blah, 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 like, or we return shareholder problem. They're always like, so I'm like, yeah, shareholder value. It's always that increasing shareholder value. You're, you're so much smarter than the people who are working in the business, running the business that you can just show up and tell them how to better do their business. I mean, yeah, like raise revenue, cut expenses. I think they can figure some of that out on their own, mm-hmm. but what's with this garbage can study? Yeah. So if, if anyone was on Twitter yesterday, depending on where you are on, on Twitter and like that, which corner you're on, on your timeline, uh, there was a lot of news around uh, Mayor Adams rolling out a trash can, announcing that New York City is going to start using trash cans instead of just dumping bags of trash on the street. And Buck, you lived in New York for a long time. I also lived in the city for a long time. We also both thankfully escaped to Florida mm. uh, where we don't have trash on the street somehow and we're a civilized place and we also don't have state taxes to take care of things, but that's okay. Uh, and New York City announced, I, I, what people don't actually realize is this announcement is not actually going to fix the trash problem in New York City. For anyone who hasn't visited the city is you just have piles of trash bags everywhere. And the rats of New York are the best fed animals in the city because they're just huge and going all the time. Um, and it's apparently only for buildings that have one to nine units. So I don't even think this trash can situation is being enforced for big buildings, which is the biggest problem in the city. It's for these smaller, I think, brownstones, but I could be wrong on that. But overall, Mayor Adams comes out wheeling a, tra- a very small trash can. And if you notice in the video, and I don't know if you're able to clip this in for your audience later, but uh, they have tape <laughs> in a square on the ground to, sh- to show him exactly where to place that trash can to display it during their big announcement. And part of what's been revealed since this major trash transformation hubbub in New York City is that the city two years ago paid McKinsey $4 million to do a study on whether it's better to have trash on the street or in a trash can. So it took $4 million for New York City to understand what a trash can is. And if I had to bet, if we looked into it, I'm sure someone has a friend at McKinsey who was working on that study. So, yeah, it's a government government efficiency at its finest. Yep. Management consulting, everybody. There you go. Telling people obvious things and charging them a whole lot of money for it. Um, I, what is the most controversial thing that you have covered recently on non-lib take? Like what, what, get, what has gotten you the most? Because you cover a whole range of ground um, and, and occasionally yeah. you upset the uh, what are they? What's the the official terminology? Is soy lib beta male? Is that right? Low T soy betas. Low T low yeah. T soy betas. Low what has gotten them betas. particularly angry lately? I, I like to see that you're upsetting them. Oh, that's a good question. I guess there there are a bunch of things. Um, I mean, I have a video that's pinned to the top of my profile where I um, it's a very simple video. I'm just sitting with my dog, and there's a caption over me that says. Uh, isn't it interesting how dogs only come in male and female? And if you chop the balls off a dog, it's still a boy. Uh, and so a lot of people get very worked up over that. Uh, I also did a video about uh, SCOTUS's decision on Trump's immunity, and a lot of leftists were melting over that. So we always expect that, you know, I'm sorry, sorry, the Constitution is happening to you. That's always very for them. Uh, so I think those are the two the two biggest meltdowns that I've seen. And interestingly enough, I get a lot of uh, Europeans following my page. They're not a a meaningful chunk of my followers, but I get a lot of messages from people in Europe who see what's happening to their country. And a lot lot of them are actually really relying on America to course correct to help their countries as well. They need us to 
you know, set the current with everything that's going on. Um, and so I did a story recently about how uh, there was a there's a supermarket in Alabama that's dispensing ammo, like like a Diet Coke, like you can just order it comes out. It's great. You have to present your ID and everything. Um, but some people were upset because I said the European mind cannot comprehend. And and I did know this fact already, but some people from Switzerland decided to reach out to let me know that in Switzerland, they, you know, most males have a gun. I do know about that. They do have a military draft in Switzerland uh, and they have a very interesting system where, you know, every single year you have to go in and show the number of bullets that you have. So there's an entire discussion to be had around that. But um, that got the European yeah. men kind of upset. Yeah, but they're, by the way, uh, just but we to don't be care clear, about them. they're not. They, 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 those rifles are kept at home. They're for military service. They don't conceal carry, for example. So they don't all, conceal it's, carry. It's, they're, it's, not it's, the exactly. they're not allowed it's to use the bullets. Exactly. It's people who go, yeah. oh, Switzerland. Right. They don't understand. They, they don't, you know, yes. that would be if someone decided to like invade Switzerland that they could run, get the guns at that point, it'd be too late anyway. Um, but uh, yes. I, I want to ask you another gun question. Um, and it, I'm sure you might've seen uh, a Supreme Court justice had to be defended with uh, lethal lethal force um against mm -hmm. well her car i should say was if let, let, we'll get into this in a second uh look a good friend of mine is porter stansbury and he did something he wants you to know about the guy runs a, a major company very successful and you know he was making big time ceo money and he said you know what i'm cutting my salary to a dollar now he's doing this because he wants to make a point he wants to talk to people and teach people who will listen that even as a ceo of a publicly traded company there's a better way to get paid a way that you can get paid as well it's not gold or bitcoin what Porter says is that while every American is legally entitled to use what he calls this secret currency, few know very much about it, but he wants to change that. Uh, and with the way the U.S. government's destroying the dollar, he strongly recommends you check out his latest detailed presentation online at secretcurrency2024.com. I doubt you'll see this idea or opportunity discussed in this way anywhere else. So go take a few minutes, check out Porter Stansbury's fascinating insights, Go to secretcurrency2024.com. That's secretcurrency2024.com. Um, so you see this uh, Sotomayor, who is, uh, look, I, I will mm -hmm. say it, uh, the least intelligent member of the Supreme Court, uh, the most left-wing. It's like the comment section of MSNBC sits there in a robe and gets to weigh in on the Constitution. Uh, but her uh, U.S. Marshals were carjacked or attempted. There was an attempted carjacking outside of her home, her car, and mm -hmm. they opened up on the guy, shot him. He didn't end up dying. But I just think it's interesting because Sotomayor says that there's no constitutional right to bear arms for protection. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And especially, you know, she doesn't know his circumstances. This is systemic racism that drove him to do this in theory. Right. So, I mean, that's what she would argue. It's crazy how it's rules for thee, not for me. That's always how it works with the left. She is a classic limousine liberal. And, um, I just don't know who's surprised seeing these, you know, it's the same way that we have Hollywood celebrities. They all live in gated communities. They all have private security. That private security always has guns. Same thing with every single leftist politician. They they just want the rest of us to live differently. Um, I think that every single law that applies to the rest of us should apply to them. So I, and especially for, for what this was, which is a carjacking. I mean, I personally think, yeah, someone's carjacking your car. You should be able to defend yourself and defend your property. Um, but Sotomayor would definitely, if someone else were going through this situation, she would judge it to say, well, you were not in imminent danger, right? Like we could, we could hypothesize as to what her argument would be. It would certainly not be in favor of shooting the thief. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, the people who are opposed so often to citizens uh, defending themselves or having the right to defend themselves, they, they have a uh, Armed guards, twenty four seven. It's funny Always. how that you know Bloomberg, Always. who was a decent mayor in New York, I will say, but this was always one of his big points of hypocrisy. He had armed guards all the time, but you weren't allowed to, as mm -hmm. a law abiding uh, citizen, be able to defend yourself, especially if you live in a high crime neighborhood. Nope, nope. Only the criminals allowed to have guns. One more thing here from Birch Gold Group: If you had a million dollars in two thousand and nine, it'd be worth seven hundred thousand dollars today. That is the effect of out of control government spending on your hard earned dollars. Central banks, major major countries are hoarding gold more and more these days. Why are they doing that? Well, because of inflation, hyperinflation, and what can happen with economic collapse. But for over 20 years, Birch Gold has helped Americans prepare for this by diversifying and getting an existing IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in physical gold. The best part is it doesn't cost you a penny out of pocket. A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau, tens of thousands of happy customers you can trust Birch Gold too. 
To learn more, text the word BUCK, B-U-C-K, to 989898. Get a free no-obligation info kit on gold. Again, text BUCK to 989898 to protect your hard-earned savings today. So what's next uh, on the uh, Aaron Wexler non-lib take agenda? Tell us tell us what we can expect uh, this week. How are you going to upset the soy lib non <laughs> Low T soy lib. Be- I can <laughs> never low T soy betas. Low T. Low I'm gonna get. Fuck, I'm gonna betas. get you a shirt. There we go. I'm gonna order you one of my shirts that I have on my website. I'll, I'll get it so you know you won't forget. Um, we could get one for Ginger too. I'll make a dog shirt for it. That'd be amazing. Um, don't worry. It says it says not a low T soy beta, so Thank no you. one will confuse you That's for being a low T soy beta. What's next? You know, I'm just I. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. There are always new videos, stories. I'm just putting out as much content as I possibly can, um, appearing on a bunch of shows such as yours. It's always mm-hmm. nice to be on. So thank you for having me. Uh, and uh, yeah, doing more. I have a, a bunch more podcasts lined up for the summer. So people will hear me in longer form, which will be great. And uh, God willing, we just keep changing minds and help the left see that they're, they're on the wrong side. And that's really what I'm trying to have do. Been, I'm trying to do that through through humor. Have you been getting hit with like censorship a lot on TikTok? Uh, or is it is it pretty good these days? No, TikTok, I'm fully shadow banned. They uh, put me in, I've, I've been put in TikTok prison way too many times. Uh, so they just don't even show my videos to anybody anymore. Uh, and that's okay, because I don't love having TikTok on my phone anyways. Uh, but uh, But Instagram has actually been quite good. And that's I actually, I'm, I'm thinking of doing a video in the next week or so around Mark Zuckerberg, because I feel like he's had this Chad transformation. And it's this very low key transition for him. It's a transition I could actually get behind where he's turned into this pro America, like UFC guy, like holding an, uh, you know, the American yeah. flag on 4th of July. And we need more of that. Um, and he's obviously not being vocal about his politics. But I'm, I think there's some Easter eggs in his activity that tell me that he is voting for Trump. It so. almost sounds like you're looking for a guy in social media, 5'8", now much bigger <laughs> than a trust fund, brown eyes, <laughs> but, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, right? So there you go. There you yeah. go. There um, you go. Mark coming oh, through yeah. for free speech, it seems. Non lib take. Good to see you. Also known as Aaron. I guess Aaron, also known as non lib take. I don't know why I just sounded like Trump there, too. You know, sometimes when I'm talking to Carrie. I'm just like, excuse me, excuse me. She's like, don't do that. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't even know I was doing it. I didn't even know I'm doing it. It just happens. Like, excuse me, excuse me. Um, anyway, good to see you. It's we'll so talk good. soon. Great to see you, Buck. Thanks.